Welcome to Chaos and Climate. My name is Frank Mittlerner and I'm a professor and air quality specialist in the Department of Animal Science at UC Davis. So I frequently get asked how much land is used for grazing livestock. And that's mainly because people are concerned that about 70%, that's 70, 70% of land, agricultural land, is used for livestock. So the assertion is out there, why not using it to grow plants directly? And I have a pretty strong opinion on that one. Now let me first give you, show you a little trick here. Imagine this sheet of paper here being the surface of the earth. This is everything. And now I fold it and I fold it twice until it's only a quarter its original size or equivalent to the size of a postcard. This total amount of area is all land available in the world. The rest is water and ice. All land, rest, water and ice. Now this is my business card. And the equivalent size of my business card is all agricultural land in the world. So again, this is all land and this is all agricultural land. Now I take my business card and I fold it into one piece that's two thirds and the other piece one third its original size. And what you see now is a larger piece and that larger piece, two thirds of my business card, represents the so-called marginal land, marginal agricultural land. And that means that land is really not suitable to grow crops. Why not? Because it either does not have soil quality that allows growing of crops or there's not enough water. So two thirds of all agricultural land, approximately 70%, is really used for livestock. But to be more precise, ruminant livestock like cattle, sheep, goats. Why ruminants? Because they can take non-human edible feedstuff, such as grasses and legumes, and convert it into animal source foods. Without ruminant animals, we could not make use of that amount of agricultural land. The remainder of my business card, the one-third, is all agricultural land that's considered arable. And it's called arable because here you can grow crops, whether it's for people or for animals, and that's the only land we have in the world that is suitable for that purpose. So think about that. This is all land and this is all arable land. This is how limited we are. And by the way, the crops that grow on this arable land of course also have to be fertilized. Half of the fertilizer going on this land comes from animal manure. is so-called organic fertilizer. So if we were to forego animal agriculture altogether, then effectively it would mean that we would throw away the use of 70% of all agricultural land and we would have to replace all the organic fertilizer that goes on this land with chemical fertilizers, which are very carbon intensive in their production. So by making use of marginal lands, we contribute on the one hand to carbon sequestration, but we also upcycle non-human edible feeds into animal source foods that are very nutrient rich. This is precisely what needs to be done in order to feed a growing population.